Hi folks. I got my trusty killer rig first tonight. And we got a few laughs from last night. Everybody stomped on a PR firm's troll, internet troll, known as Ed. And um, 700 comments, and I, I think it's something like 500 of them while we're either stomping on his head or laughing at the people that were stomping on his head. And so <laughs> that man took a beating, that creature. He could have been a robot. That could have been a robot. Uh, he took a good beating. I don't think he was, but uh, don't be surprised. 60% of the Internet is robots. Um, but they don't get the traffic because of the spam filters and everything else anymore. So tonight we're going to do a recap and we're looking at 200 pictures plus. So I better get moving because that's not much time in an hour to get through all of this. And just a quick note before I forget, because I always do. So for tonight, uh, hi Diane Harrison, thank you. Uh, I see your comments and I just never remember to mention it. And Donna and Stacy Lane, uh, 74, Nuts for Art, Anna Beck, uh, Osilda, G O D S, I can't, um, and look, went up 24, uh, 420, Mr. Jimmy Jack, Panzer, I just wanted to say hi to. A few people that I don't say hi to enough. Forty people. Andrew Archambrot, uh, forty-two. Third watch. Miss Milky's out. She dropped by. Folks, if you understood how much time goes into putting, uh, making her videos. I don't know how. Like I've said it many times before, I have no concept of how she can find time to get on our streams. And uh, Carol B, I forgot to say hi. And Ricky Sticky. Carol B. Carol B. And I just wanted to make sure I said hi to a few people anyway. So, how's that? That was my first picture. It was actually an audio. And this explosion, this detonation you're looking at, we all seen this many times. That was one of the first pictures uploaded onto the computer into the wire cast. And I uh, better come over to that page because I've done my saying highs. Hi, Jimmy, Sergeant, Andrew, Elizabeth, Ivan. Sorry, man. I didn't want to be rough on you because I know you're okay, but I don't want to be rough on anybody else who comes by, but not. So I just try to stay there to, um, I try to stick in the topic to the really nasty stuff and. What they're doing, what you say earlier, what you're doing, you know, you're right in saying it, it's criminal. And it's extraordinarily upsetting under any other circumstances. And it's still a very valid point. I'm not saying nothing like that. But I, I'm worried about all the people that are coming in and haven't been to the stream and you read these comments and they get distracted. And it's so important to bring them in and get them at least a show into them. And that way, uh, they're, at least they got a chance of understanding the basics because um, I listen to lectures all day every day and every one of them are out there. Uh, when you think about the tobacco industry there's thousands, uh, it was uh, the Golden Holocaust, a professor from Stanford wrote a book recently and he was saying how thousands and thousands of professors and doctors and media personalities were owned by the tobacco industry and he said it was the biggest breach of academic uh, science since the Nazi period uh, because their control, the professors are pro, he was hired by a tobacco lobbyist at Stanford and there's just, it's inconceivable how many is actually out there, not counting the lobbyists and so I don't know how I digressed but anyway I just want you to think I was being a dick I can be but I wasn't, right? Just passing through uh, Alex, uh, when when cut to man, let me check that out. Uh, oh yeah, this works. Hi Duane, or Lisa, Miss Milky, 
Church Cantor, Starlight Gazer, Elizabeth, Bob, Sergeant, hey bud, <laughs> um, Christopher, aka Chris, and Ivan again, and Elizabeth, a Dominate, Adam, Airbrush, uh, Aviator, Zip Free, Zip Free, 33 Tree, hi, uh, Daisy, uh, Logo Man, I just say hi to a few people, seeing as I'm here, and then I'll come right over to the pictures because we got to get moving really fast. We're going to go straight through for the entire show. And I'll check the comments just in case my audio. And when I click on really high quality pictures, sometimes it might be legs. So I'm going to slow things down a bit as I'm going through it, which means i got to click on pictures pretty quickly after. So there was uh, that explosion you were looking at happened to four of those uh, nuclear facilities. And three of them are completely melted. They had pools over them. Uh, this is about fire balloons. Yeah, fire balloons. And Japan sent them over in 1944. They went up into jet streams at 100 miles an hour. It took them around three days to reach the coastline. And you can see quickly, because i got to go through a lot of pictures, but you can see where they all landed. And so you can expect... You can expect all the death plumes from Japan coming from the death streams across the Pacific Ocean to inhabit that till the end of time because of what you're looking at there now. It says six days to reach the coastline. That's actually wrong. It's half that time. Jet streams at 100 miles an hour minimum. Uh, every 24 hours, 2,400 miles. So you can do your own math. And so everybody in North America should be wearing that. Seriously. Especially, uh, we live in that age where we could have done something like that for all the plumes. Especially when you were having these peaks, right? The government should have said, here's all the suits, look, climb in that and stay in that for a couple of days. And we get uh, Walmart to go out and clean your gardens. $15 an hour. So it's a raise in the wage, you know. I'm climbing around, I don't know. Keep going. That's building four. That's the pool they're working on, by the way. That's the beautiful, wonderful pool. It's full of rods all over the place. A piece this big will kill everybody in the room, at your lunchroom, in your classrooms, at your work, uh, before they can sneeze. And we'll keep going. Because we've got a lot to cover. And obviously you can see all the pools are intact and they're fine. Remember those frames you see on the outside of the building. You can actually put a great big SUV on that comfortably. And lots of room to open your doors up and step into it. Lots of room. Uh, another one. This was from a peer review study of a two week dispersal. From a German marine institute. And they only covered uh, cesium-137. They didn't touch any of the weaponized isotopes. They didn't touch any of the uranium, the plutonium, the strontiums, and the many, many family trees of cesium and its byproduct. And, but that, that's a two-week dispersal. It's been hemorrhaging to the ocean. We'll cover that a bit more as we're going through, hopefully. I won't forget. Uh, this iconic one was 10 days before October the 25th, uh, 7.3 in off Fukushima, which was the same 7.3 in Boho, Philippines you're looking at. There was 100,000 houses destroyed, and you can see what it does to a highway, hundreds of millions of tons getting picked up in earthquakes of a 7.3. Okay, and what's important to remember, of course, is that there's been an internet blackout in martial law 10 days after the Boho Philippines earthquake, which is what you're looking at, when it happened in Japan, they shut down the internet. And so we have been hammering away since then, since that date, actually, if I remember correctly. Because we're worried about more boom, 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 booms going on in Japan, because that means more death plumes, that means more hell for the ocean, that means... Um, the entire species in the ocean, in the Pacific Ocean, has no hope unless we do something to salvage something. They build aquariums to, you know, like the arcs. 
because that creature is right around the corner in Canada. And you've seen how thick it gets, right? Think about how thick that gets. So no matter what side, where you're parked to on the shoreline, it's coming at you from both sides above you from the rain clouds. So you're looking at around five, uh, 6,000 miles across by, say, 7,500 miles long. And so a 1,000 miles of clouds are picking that up and bringing it all the time, picking it up, bringing it all over the coastline, picking it up, bringing it all over the continents till the end of time. Keep going. I already done that one for you. And how's the audio going? Sounds good. Don't look at anybody saying anything but the audio. Okay, we'll keep going. Hi, Broken Ass Islander. Hi, Kerry. Um, I'll just say hi for a second. Let's see if there's anything. Sylvia, Third Watch, Elizabeth, Miss Milky the Clown. Uh, I don't know how you do it. And Elizabeth M again. Okay, here we go. Keep going. Because there's a lot of pictures. Let's see if we can get through them all in that hour. And that's such a great picture. Obviously, the future, there's still hope. <laughs> that's a stunning picture. That's a very stunning picture. Uh, you can see the carnage without the new tents they put over them. I'll get to down later in the stream here. And I think we should all be dressing like that right now. There's no doubt about it. The Geiger counter in the hand is pretty, uh, but these Geiger counters are only for low-level background radiation. Might be a bit of stutter here why I change. Hi, Zoe. Yeah, we hear you. Good one. Um, this is a picture about depleted uranium and how it's no different than the entire country being bombed. It was from a Palestinian short video trying to articulate that. This picture, again, is the familiar one that I had an angry administrator, remember, came after me with their blogs and said that that was wrong, and I showed them the fire balloons from Japan that took uh, three days to come across the Pacific Ocean in the jet streams in 1944 to shut them down, and we haven't heard from him no more. He directed me, he wanted me only to use a New York Times article that, that was uh, five days after the original earthquake, and that uh, debunked that picture, but that picture says six days to reach the Canadian and American coastline when it's actually only three days. But they were trying to put it longer and like it wouldn't even, actually it wouldn't even reach here, it would disperse halfway across the ocean rather. That's an important one. See, they were lying right away, right? They were saying, oh no, it broke up halfway across the ocean. Of course, we all know better now. And you can see that the pools are nowhere to be found. This was a 10 story building. And each pool had around 1,535 bundles. And they're slowly emitting it, and I'm seeing it from a lot of reliable sources, that it's 80 in a bundle, folks. That's 122,000 rods. And half a rod will kill all the mammals on the planet after it kills all the humans. And so there's a lot left over, obviously. And each pool would have had at least that much, if not a lot more. And there was a collection of about... 20 years, 25 years of rods, for instance, in those pools. So think about, it's um, 30,000 tons a year in those reactors. So how much was in those pools again at a 20 or 25 year? I forgot to do the math this afternoon, but I should have. I'll do it next time. But uh, they, want you, they want you to believe that, that what you were looking at, that's the pool inside of it. It's all fine, folks. Shut up and go back to sleep. Uh, hit, uh, you can see that pool is actually dry. I'm going to cover that a bit more later on because I have three pictures in a row for people, but not up higher in my collection. As I imported them, I still kept all the pictures in the uh, in the wire cast itself. I'll come back over to the conversation for a second. Hi, Red Button Studio. I heard your song. Can I use that? 
in my videos without worrying about someone knocking me down to copyright to a process because that's stuff you made right so you wouldn't have that on that yet would you um hi miss milky again oh uh, did uh hen hen uh pa henry pa pen pendry hattrick penry put out a new video or something i couldn't find it. i went looking for it a sergeant or somebody Aviator wants me to wave a hand to Elizabeth. Hi, Miss Frill. Strontium in the milk, right? I've been listening to all the professors. I wanted to make a point about that, was that they all use the sun as background radiation into the equations to muddle the water. They're all using rocks and bananas and walking around getting, right? And they just marry it together. And so when people are listening to them, looking for information, there's a lot of good information there. But the way they marry that, keep marrying that in and go over to another topic, um, it's, it's just really, really obvious when you're looking. Uh, keep going, Dana. So, inside the pool, pictures have emerged of this, but it wasn't inside of that pool. And so that's a tarp, it's supposed to be, say, but it's not. And it's supposed to be a um, net. I got people got really upset with me in the emails about that. That was a net. Now, I'm going to come to that after and finish the job because I got three pictures together. Let's move on. So inside of that building is supposed to be those pools, that beautiful broken up pools. We're not sure what's going on. This was some art that I thought was really cool. And that tells a good story. I mean, people need to start dressing like those people in the background. That's what the stormtroopers will be dressing like in the near future. Please stay. They'll be dressed like that. They'll be driving down the road. You'll see these goons in the outfits. But there also be, you know, you can get these stylish ones. That's pretty cool. They should get them in different colors. They should get different colors. Why is it always going to be this color? This puke. This friggin' banana out walking around. I think they should have, like, um, some rad designs. Like some camouflage. And you can get some pastel colors. And, uh, yeah. You can make a fortune right now doing it. Turn it into an art because your people will buy it for their children from when they're going to school. You can get your kid to dress up and dad every day going to school. You can't blame yourself for doing it. That's the right thing to do. It's the ethical thing to do. Costs a friggin' lot of money. And I love that painting. I like to know who made it, but there was no name on it. I zoomed all to a hell out of it. And there was no reference to the picture. Um, but it's a great bit. It's a great painting, folks. I think so. Well, on a big picture like I got, I can zoom right in on it. <coughs> and that was a small picture I found. It was uh, when I blew it up. I was laughing because uh, think of that one that's pooping as uh, the Mox fuel number three reactor. It's two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. It's much bigger than any other reactor on the planet. And Chernobyl, uh, just a quick mention of that, because I'll come up to that more in a minute. Chernobyl is one-third the size of the smallest reactor at Fukushima. And Chernobyl was using graphite, and Fukushima is using these uranium, plutonium combinations, concoctions to make these weaponized isotopes that I'll cover in a bit. And I really liked that picture. I cropped it, because I liked that. And I was looking at it, and I was, you know, I really liked that. That says a lot to me. I don't know if it says anybody else, but it, it says a lot about what I what I see now, the way I see things. And so does that. Uh, it's much worse than that. Uh, we get standard colors for radiation. See, so they're going to build, and they are building a, and they have built a, an encasement around that, but they haven't done anything. You don't see anybody in there working. You don't see anybody with cutting torches. You don't see anybody building scaffolds. Because if you get close to any of these rods or pellets, and each of the rods are full of pellets, totally different game, very scary game. And you don't need this enrichment to make um, nuclear power. They've been making nuclear power for 40, 50, 60, 70 years. Let's keep going. we got a long way to go. Uh... So you won't see anybody with cutting torches, anybody in there, any engineers. They're all like, no, not going in there. Can't make me. 
because you won't come back out just as well because you're so irradiated. they got to leave you on the side. It's not like you can take your carcass off the side. And I'll cover more of that in a minute. See, that's not a little boom. That's a horrendous boom. That's unseen on this planet before at a nuclear reactor. Boom, boom, boom. That's a concussion. That's a concussion. If you're walking a couple of hundred feet away from that, you're going to get, if you survive it, you're going to get skinny knees and skinny elbows, and you're going to get blown quite a ways. Chunks of it are in that bag. And what they do when there's a contamination in certain scenarios is they take the topsoil. Well, in this case, you can see they're going through neighborhoods. And that was in order to bring people back in there and, and have this illusion that it's not as bad as it is. They, they don't know what to do with it. They got nothing to do with it. They were burning it right after and liberating all these isotopes these hideous isotopes, unbelievably hideous, with extraordinary lives. Uh, forget about the cesium-137. Not really, but it's nothing compared to everything else that's going under. Forget about the dummies that are talking about the iodine with an eight-day half-life. Well, that's applicable um, in one sense, because it shows you there's that uh, fusion going on, so it showed up, so there is still a fusion going on there, st or still releasing, there's still a high energy release going on. Um, but but in, what I try to always say to people is there's so much uranium, plutonium, and astrontiums, and all the family, hideously named again family trees that are unbelievable. I mean, Al Qaeda can go down there and get with his real Geiger counter that can actually find the high particles, because the ones you were buying on here for low particles, I'm not saying don't buy it, I'm not saying it doesn't have a use, but you have to know how to calibrate it specifically, you know what you're looking for, and there's just so many of these isotopes, if you find anything, run, right, run, that's my, my stutter while I go to the next. Next window, oh, came before. Let it settle down for a second. Come to the next picture. For a couple of moments. Yeah, you guys bashed the living daylights out of Ed last night. Where's Ed to? I miss him, man. Come on, Ed. Hi, Laurie. Uh, see if I can catch anybody. Bubba. Hey, buddy. Alex Smith, Bourbon Ass Islander, WV Dave. Yeah, where's the robots? Look at my Chernobyl video link below after uh, Chernobyl 3828. You can learn a lot about robots right there. But every robot they tried down there died. Everything they tried. They're, they're working hard trying to create robots specifically for that job. It's going to be years. Unfortunately, it's terrible, you know. Thank you, Daisy, 3323DFG. Okay, let me keep going. So the building you're looking at is a fable in order to give the media something to regurgitate. Uh, like I say, again, you won't see any pictures. You can't get into that building. It's just sprayed from one, two, and three with rods and the pellets, hundreds of thousands of tons that weren't atomized, and just as much was atomized. I'm going to keep going. Massive carnage. Just incredible carnage. And they built towers over that. To make it look pretty again. See that? Isn't that pretty? So they're going to catch the gas. A lot of those towers were broken. They apparently repaired that. Uh, the whole problem is you can't get into those buildings. But at least they're catching the gas. But what are they going to do with it? They're going to have controlled releases. So it allows them on the site. The site is, is full of water because the site got sprayed in those explosions, right? Let's keep going. And once again, uh, the beams in the back of it, you can see standing up, what's left over from the detonation, that used to be a 10-story building, and had pools above it that don't exist anymore, but everybody's nitpicking. And you can park a great big SUV up on those uh, spanners, 
of the framing. That's how big that stuff is. It's huge. That was a 10-story building, and they've never had a detonation before on any one of the nuclear plants that we know about. And that's a really good look at it. Remember, they got... Um, they use these panels, they just drop them in, they slot in. Nobody can get in there and put a wrench on it. It's so friggin' dangerous. It's so frightening. It's, it's unbelievable. But this is good. Well, I mean, the cores are gone down into the earth. That's the only reason they're there doing what they're doing. The cores are gone way to freak down. You can't... Uh, you can't escape the reality of what's going on. They're, they, they're trying to lie and sugarcoat it all. And they need to do that stuff. And that's why these pictures you're looking at are so important, right? And he said they were going to clean out the pools by using a vacuum. Well, how the frig are you going to use a vacuum on that? How the hell are you going to use a vacuum cleaner to clean that up? And that's the one they're talking about that they're working on right now. And the rods are so volatile that dropping stuff on it released all those noble gases again, right? So that's why they had another detonation there. And we're going through these pictures because these are rare pictures coming up. In the near future, you won't be able to find these pictures. They're going to start, well, they are, deleting them off the net because they got the uh, nice shiny buildings there and they want this to go away. Uh, and you can see why, right? Because the pictures are a trillion words for anybody that's searching. And we're almost through that lot. I think this is the last one. That's a staggering. That was I zoomed in and snapped that one, cropped it out. Uh, you can see the carnage. Just unbelievable. So, yeah, I mean, we've got three melted reactors. We can't put up with anybody bullshitting us about that. And they, they're melted all day, every day. And they will be for tens of thousands of years. You go look up the experts. Um... So this is a, a Chernobyl, a guy in a suit with a baby carriage out walking his baby. There's a big cornfield behind him. And that's a shiny looking cart they got there. I guess they've done that for a photo. I can't remember. Yeah, so that's the Wikipedia's. A million people went through Chernobyl. They were running out on the roof, and we'll get into that a bit. This was the helicopter, uh, the guy who'd done the documentary as he was flying into it, and he was talking about how there wasn't, there's normally another helicopter goes in there and chemtrails the sky. That was way back then in Chernobyl. We'd go in to chemtrail the area, and you couldn't see down normally. And it, that was because of all the radiation coming up, the particulates, because they're electronically charged, and they would attract each other to the aggregates that they were dropping out. I can't remember what it was, boric something, pellets or some dust, rather. Uh, don't quote me on it. It's in that one down there, uh, Chernobyl 3828. And the people in the helicopter got too close. And they got such a deadly dose that they become so disoriented. The helicopter ended up rolling over. He was recorded saying he was disor uh, disoriented. But then he would have went into a death spam, right? So he probably pulled back on the stick or something. Frightening stuff. Um, the guy who took this picture, he... Um, that's him there. He, he didn't last much longer. And look how close he was. These guys would run out for 15 or 20 seconds on the roof. And then they would go home. Unlike Fukushima, where they don't even got a home. They're homeless off the streets. And they went through a million people at Chernobyl. Gorbachev mobilized 600,000 soldiers right away. And they were going on the roof in the groups of 12. Just going to hang on. Might stutter while I roll. And so they would run out, they got 12 seconds and run back in, or 15 or 20 seconds, say. So for the first number of days, they would go and just get stuff out of the way, and they would use a little tiny cold shovel. And because if they pick up a big piece, it would probably kill them, and they would, people would have to run over them, and that'd be a waste of time. They'd have to get his body out of the way. 
because you got too close to it before you got back down the hallway. You could die so fast because this stuff could melt your organs in the spot. Um, and these guys were made in, made their own lead aprons. And they were doing like a minute, minute and a half on the roof. And so the idea was 12 people would run out on the roof. Um, hang on one second, let's check. Thousands of Rankins. Thousands. Say 500 will flatten you. 200 will kill you. You'll die within a short while later, within a week or two weeks. 500 will flatten you out on the spot. They were running out on 12,000 with sneakers on. 12,000. They had to get it off the roof. So they were running over all these rocks and then running back down and going home. So you got one run. You run like as fast as you could. Take your little tiny shovel, pick up a little piece, and then run. And you were making a path out onto the roof for the next people. And one guy would instruct over 100 groups a day of their job to run out, throw it over the roof, run back, go home. Have a drink of vodka. Here's your 800. Uh, current, uh, can't remember the coinage, but 800 bucks and have a nice life. You get a medal. Fukushima doesn't have that at all. Doesn't have that integrity. And uh, people are being murdered. They might not die today. They might die tomorrow, next week, next month, next year at the most. You're taking, a lot of them are not going to last till the end of the year. Because they're not out there for 15 and 20 seconds when this was all... You know, and it's still going on there. You've seen the numbers, folks. Go up to E&E &E News. Let me keep going for a minute. But he's in his sneakers. That guy is dead. He died a few days later. You can't survive that. That's what the video below is called, 3828. Because these guys got rid of their dosimeter badges. They were there to get the job done. A lot of guys took their 15 and 20 seconds. A lot of guys took their badges and gave it to people running out there. And they got the rankings. And they went home with no rankings. Well, they still got rankings being on the side, but not running out on Masha and getting the eight, ten, twelve thousand rankings. Just came over. Heralds. Same as Fukushima's. We'll never know them, the homeless. And the guy you seen to, who took those pictures, they buried the cameras with them because they were so radiated. Think about it. That's crazy. And uh, there's a lot of people went that route really fast this one here uh, sharp features off British Columbia right try to open it hi Lunar checks and balances Albert Sergeant Sylvia Ivan uh, here we go keep going we still got quite a ways to go yeah <coughs> excuse me so this was a study done by the Canadian government where they flew along the coastline. And it was a good opportunity for them to test out because the plumes, the plumes from, you can see that center, maybe, the center uh, sentence there. But the plumes, they wanted to fly through the plumes coming from uh, Japan. That was March the 20th, uh, well, uh, March 19th and the 20th for 18-hour period in a big plane, a sophisticated plane, millions of dollars worth of equipment, sniffing at 750 feet along the entire coastline of Canada. And it was a snowstorm from the jet streams right to the ocean of invisible radiation. And it was spiking in those days. It was constant radiation then and constant radiation after. But there was a, that particular one showed a couple of, day, uh, couple of days of huge spikes. Uh, and they never told people to get suits and stay indoors. Uh, and that came out just recently. And you can see the color coding, the, the top color uh, over here on this side, the top one, is the most toxic. And you can see in the lower end of the island, uh, that got hammered with toxics, really bad. And all the kids were walking to school when all this was going on. People were walking around, going, getting out of the cars, doing their day's work, getting their mails, walking their dogs. And this was really high dose, and they knew it, and they never said nothing. 
Unbelievable. And you can see where they done all, every 15 minutes they took a sample along Vancouver Island. That's what each, which, each one of those dots you see. There we go, keep going. And you can see how this blue all the way out towards Alberta and Ontario even, right across Canada, right out into the Americas. The really high toxin stuff, and no one was warned about that. We'll keep going. And and so the propaganda coming out says the inside of number four looks like that. But like I've showed you repeatedly here tonight, number four looks like that. See? And so how did you get from there to that thing? That's probably five or six. Maybe. We don't know for sure. It could be old stock footage. Oh, well, it's not because the, that's RT screen capture. They went in with CNN and BBC. So that was probably five or six. Certainly wasn't four. Uh, do you think it, that's inside of that building? You know, so. Why the lie? See? Why the lie? Uh, obviously, it can't look like that. No matter how much Molly made you hire, they'd be dead bodies everywhere. Even if they were to accomplish it, there'd still be dead bodies everywhere. How would you get all the dead bodies? You'd go to a million people. You still couldn't do it, see? You would kill them. That's how toxic that building is, and it will be. Think about a Dixie Cup of this stuff. We'll kill everybody in a restaurant, say McDonald's, in an hour, every hour, 24 hours a day, till the end of time, for, for over a billion years. Just a Dixie Cup of the stuff that was in those rods. I mean, they'll kill you in an hour. So Molly Mae didn't go in there and, right, and take their brakes leaning and all, blah, blah, blah. No. So it's a total fable. And a total fable, a deadly, a deadly fable, a deadly fable where people are not able to understand how simple the lie is. The bigger the lie, the more to believe it, right? And that's a big lie. That's huge. They're going to owe on that one. People are going to be angry about that one in the near future. They can't hold that back anymore, see? These buildings are all destroyed, one, two, three, and four. They all had detonations. Got to keep going because we'll get a lot of pictures of shit. And so you can see how much damage. Um, I can't say hi for people for a second. Hi, Query, for, let's see if I catch anybody who didn't say hi to, Char, 2643. Hi, Russell, Russell Stewart. Hi, Gil Gamish, Rocco. Let's see if I catch any names I haven't seen. Mickey. Joel, no, they don't. Joel, they don't have robots. They got robots for some of the stuff, yeah. That's true. But once you get them in close to these buildings, you can't really see if you touch anything in the building, it falls down on those 9,000 degree Fahrenheit melted cores. And then you have to run because you're releasing all these noble gases for starters, and you're inside of that big tent. And so then you, everybody runs, gets out of there, and then they turn on, at the same time the fans are going on for the chimneys, and they're going to try to vacuum it all out there if there's any kind of releases. All the detectors are screaming. Hopefully, hopefully they got that. Can you really trust these people? It's just one endless favor, uh, fable. There's a town down in California that got 150,000 signatures that the United Nations should go capture Japan. They got to go take over Fukushima now. So people are aware in some places, you know, 150,000. But a lot of people believe that fable. That's a very harmful, dangerous fable. That's a deadly fable. That's a vicious lie fable. This is a stagger. I think this is the Fukushima 50. That's a very rare picture. 
and you can see the building from the inside and what looks like a big some kind of tarp in front of them it's a huge tarp and you can see weights on it and it doesn't look like it's on a pond it looks like it's sitting on rubble but that's where the pond's supposed to be you can see um, the crane in the background and you can see there's no roof there there's no walls there like all the other pictures so this is a rare picture it's a very special picture I think it tells a lot of stories especially a high quality one because you can zoom all over the place it's very high quality and obviously it's not the same building right you can't fix that building you can't get in there those people that were in there you know we don't even know if that picture is real but if it is real it's probably the Fukushima 50 their job was to go in and access everything too right the damage so that would have been the rear pictures. And that's why that is a rear picture. There's not many pictures like it out there that I could find readily. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. So what we got here is a bit of enigma. Uh, the corner, the bottom corner of that pool, what you see the pool there? Uh, that's number four on, on the fifth floor, I think it is. And that's empty. And there's no, there's no mesh there. Uh, there's another picture coming up, two, three pictures coming back up over there. So I'll come back to that after. Obviously, this is not the inside of the same building. So all the media is telling us that that is the same building. It's inside that building in the last couple of weeks. And that, my friends, is a very dangerous thing. Plus, we got the internet blackout. We know the damage is like this. We know it's rods everywhere. We know this coning burnt off the rods in the pool. We know the pool caught fire two times. We know there was a detonation. It was a nuclear detonation, which is different, but still, you don't want you don't want to be walking within a couple of hundred feet of that detonation. It might knock your legs right off your body. And so this fable where they laid this uh, uh, Lego kit and they built this fable was was just to trick people that they're actually doing something. They can't do nothing with one, two, and three. They're melted. The fuel pools are all gone. Everything is gone. And it's all hemorrhaging out into the ocean. All day, every day. They emit 400 tons a day. Put that in that big model. Put the plutonium, the strontium, the uranium, the cesiums, 1,300 weaponized isotopes in those models. And it's a different model. And so the rainstorms will pick that stuff up, see, really quick. All of a sudden, you'll be looking at saying, oh, yeah, it's hammering away at that stuff, too. If you actually had it in the model and had an open debate, I wouldn't be doing it, you know, the rear one out there saying stuff like that. But there's a good crew of us now saying the same thing. Everybody's getting it. Everybody's looking, seeing it for themselves and understanding it as they come up on it and understanding the fictions and the facts. And that's a powerful thing. That's what we're doing the best that we can, because you can't trust the media for a solid story, and it's terrible. There's no way, you know, uh, these are functional, right? You can vacuum up some of that, but you can't vacuum all of that up. And you've seen the pictures with all the wires hanging down and tangled up, jammed and everything. A vacuum can't lift that. I used to splice those wires. And each strand, you had to be so careful because it could be a fat lip in the black eye. That's how much t tension is there when you're trying to splice it. And you got a big wooden hammer and you got a big spike and you drive a spike down through it and you got to wind it down. You got to shove that wire down. You got to fit it through to splice it. And you'll tear your hands up. I've done uh, much, so much of that over my lifetime. Right from the old school. And so no vacuum is going to suck that stuff up. If you try to pick it all up, you crack off a bunch of rods, you can have a detonation again immediately. So it's not something they're going to attempt. You know, and you'll kill all the people with that kind of a bang that's in that area. That could have happened earlier in the game we don't know about. Right? They secretly lie down there now. We'll never know. Uh, but there's no way that that's the nice, clean pristine pool that they claim in the pictures you've watched, right? Well, it's important that you see this stuff because uh, that's not the same spot, right? So why the fable? 
and we covered that extensively. We, how are you going to suck all that up? And then the, the bundles are down in these slots, so all that dirt goes down and fills up the slot. You can't get it out of the slot, even if you tried. You crack it. It's like a, and these, these things are twisted. The building is leaning. The whole surrounding area has been um, waterlogged for a couple of years straight. So the foundation has nothing there with integrity. So an earthquake like on October 25th, when it closed down the internet, could have caused a lot of damage, but we'll never know. We'll just never know. We have these fables. That's all they feed us now. Right, and that's not the inside. There's no way to get in there. Right, there's no way to get in there. It had a detonation in there, so there's rods everywhere. And they're hiding this stuff from everybody for some reason. All of a sudden, when this is all common knowledge a year ago. And these are some of the zooms that I done in Extractor because it was really high quality, just to give people a better understanding of what we're talking about. And remember, this is a collection over 49 days. And we're, you know, I was new at this, still am. And the first 10 days was hell on earth trying to get everything to work. But we're getting better at it. Um, so, how do we go from. How do we end up with that building? You see the little where the arrow is pointing up to the top? Right. And that's the only indication there's some damage maybe in that building. And everybody, when they come in and the video's playing, everybody looks up in that corner and then the camera pans up and stops for a second and then I snap that screen capture and it comes right back down again. And I thought, you know, they're directing everybody up there. And what am I looking for? I wonder. And then I seen it and it actually looks like damage. But uh, it's not the same building, see? And that's what they're claiming it is because that's building four you're looking at. Um, and this is the, the PR campaign, see? Oh, we're going to take the giggling pin and connect it to the laughing shaft, and we're going to yank out the old, the old chicken bone out of the back of its throat, and everything will be fine. A few times, we'll turn the key and start her back up. And at the same time, we've done a lot of work, folks, and it's all cleaned up. Nothing to worry about here. See that, folks? So we got it all under control, and that's what they're doing. BBC is doing it. CBC in Canada is doing it. ABC and NBC, CNN, all in America is doing it. It's despicable, but that's what they're doing. They're claiming them, them fables. Look at it. Uh, you know, it's like my GMO video, I think, tonight, where I put almost 400 screen captures uh, peer review studies about how bad GMO is, so nobody could ever say anything to me, anything to me again. Well, that's what we're kind of doing here tonight, because that thing there got zero, got friggin' zero to do with this stuff, don't it? I mean, I don't need to ask you. I'm just because we're talking by myself here, but I know everybody's there watching it. I'm be nice one day when we can hear everybody. Everybody's screaming at the same time. No, you're right. You know, that'd be that'd be fun. So that was the one I was talking about. How are you gonna put a vacuum down there and suck all that up there? And as a diver, you couldn't pay me enough money, fifty thousand bucks an hour a day. Now you go down there. No, it's like no. <laughs> you know, you'd have to send down a couple of hundred thousand divers to clear all that out, literally, and figuratively. And they would never get their body. Most of their bodies would be all tangled up. And just go out there, cut away for 30 seconds, come on, run like fucking hell. Just, you wouldn't last that long because of the x rays. Can you imagine that kind of detonation? How thick ten, a 10 story building like this is built to hold all these ponds on the top of it? 20, 25 years of. Those reactors spent fuel rods, what they call spent, right? They always use these names to plead it, spent. And the daughters of the uranium, the daughters of the plutonium, right? They always, you know, so loving. And there's nothing about it that's any good. It shouldn't be on the planet, period. 
And I say that I say that all the time. And I, I've said it before too that, you know, if this gets really bad and we're in a position where we got no choice, but we got to deal with it, you know, what's the option again? The option is we can't go hiding away from this, is that, as you can see, the reactor. See, you can't get in there. It's covered in rods. It blew up. And then all the rods from one, two, and three slammed into it these as projectiles. It's really frightening stuff. Right, that's a good zoom. So you can see the carnage. My goodness, right? Yeah, how many people died to accomplish that much? I mean, you put a million up on the roof, a million people at Chernobyl. That's what it took, a million people. And they started off with 15 and 20 seconds, then they went home. That was their dose. They didn't do that at this place. See, whoever accomplished anything there, they paid a horrible price, folks. Unbelievable. And it wasn't just one. It wasn't just hundreds. Okay, it was tens of thousands. It was hundreds of thousands that went through that. So a couple of hundred thousand, was it? 250,000, I think. And they got un unimaginable doses. And they never pulled that off. They never pull that off. Can't be done. See, that must be five or six. That's the fable. Uh, once again, these are unusual pictures, so it's okay to do what we're doing to get through it. I mean, you don't need... After this video, you'll never... There's no one could ever have any shadow of doubt in your mind, I don't think. Because to me, when I'm looking at all these pictures, and I don't realize it because I'm importing pictures all the time, that's a staggering amount of, of uh, its damage to the PR firms. So once again, let's keep going a little quicker. Okay, here we go. Uh, heat signatures. Is that right, checks and balance? I believe you. I hear you. Hi, Sylvia, Alex, Joel, Albert, protest and go to jail. Just passing through. Bob. Yep, we still got a little bit to go here, folks. Not much, but we'll keep going. Finish it. Aviator. Okay, I'm coming back over right now. 52 minutes. I better start moving. So you can see how the water came in and flooded that facility. Totally flooded it. You can see the damage to number four, one of the pools there. That's lower, right? That's what they're claiming anyway. But you can see in this zoom, there's no water in that pool, see? And so that's a fake picture. That's fake uh, netting. It looks like a net. That's fake, and that's actually empty underneath it, but that's why they done it that way. Because when you look at this one, you can see there was no net, no water. It's t taken from the same pictures, folks. Okay, there's another zoom in. Or the same uh, drone flew in there. Um, so we've done some Iraq. And that's depleted uranium rounds. There was 5.5 .5 million bullets a month, every month in Iraq, fired by the military. And at least half of them were uh, depleted uranium dull ram, deplete, depleted uranium low level background radio. radio. Um, I'm just pressed for time here now because I'm thinking about how many videos I got left to go through. 52 minutes. Okay, so. Think about how that depleted uranium in those countries, particularly in Iraq at 5.5 million rounds a month, just that alone, without being depleted uranium, is that a, a over the top with lead poisoning. But think about how half of that is depleted uranium. The yellow cake, the uranium-238, and 80% of Fallujah, and how the kids, when they're walking through all that, scavenging it, right? Everything they're scavenging, it's got depleted uranium, contaminants, and... Uh, mar uh, uh, to 238 with a half a billion year lifespan 
I'm sorry, a couple of billion years half-life, and how that attacks their bodies, they have no concept. Right? The children have no concept. They're playing in those areas because they can't escape it. Every house down there has been whacked with depleted uranium in that country, including Afghanistan. There's five million orphans down there. And this is destroying their DNA, not only the GMO, which is all they're allowed to grow down there. Monsanto won the war. You're not allowed to grow your own indigenous uh, hereditary uh, seeds down there. You're only allowed to grow GMO. That's a fact. And the babies, this is going to be hard for some people, but the babies, 80% of the babies are like that in Fallujah from low-level background radioactive materials that have been sprayed all over their country, even the animals. We're going to speed things up here now and get through this. Uh, even the animals, the cows, you can see, totally deformed all over Fallujah. And it attacks the whole, it disrupts your entire system. Uh, Dick Cheney, they used so much of it. The British were down there too, right? Remember that. And these are hard pictures coming up. But you have to look at it, folks. You have to understand it. We'll move through, through it pretty quick. And 80% of the babies, so women down there don't want to have babies anymore. That's a little break for people. Um, that whole country is destroyed, see? All the animals, all the fields from depleted uranium. All the schools, all the hospitals, all the infrastructure, all the distribution, all the shops, all the park benches, all the playgrounds, St. Louis, every building. And so they're having children like that, 80% of them. And there's just an endless record of it. And that's what depleted uranium, low level, or low level, you know, just uh, uranium 238. I'll get off that picture for you, but. Um, because we've got to keep going here. We're trying to do it on the schedule. And we'll, you can see the carnage. That'll never go away. Who's going to take care of those children after their parents dies? Who's going to take care of those children? And they can't, anybody that does have children now down there is dealing with 80% um, deformity. That's common to the entire Pacific Rim and a lot of the planet because of Fukushima. It's undeniable science, you know. They can, uh, we'll cover that in a bit, but because we're moving, keep going. You can see the flood coming through. We'll just try to get another six minutes and finish it. And I got a little surprise at the ending for people. Um, you can see the flood coming through. Uh, Fukushima Prefecture's, the uh, military industrial complex's byproduct nuclear power plant. That'll make sense. And I got that in there twice. Oh, yeah, that's the FOIA release. And there's a link down below to, it's like a plume gate, so all the emails. And so you go to that page, link below, and go to your right-hand side of the screen like you see here now, and you see that'll get you started. And when you come over there, you can see 300, 400, 500 page links. Click on those links, they'll open the PDF file. If you've got a slow computer, it'll slow you down, but it's worth it. And you can see it's an audio file, and you can see the date. And as you scroll down, it, you'll find Tibbets, and that's a Tibbet, and I'm not going to go through it tonight, but... Uh, just to give you an idea, and that's a 400-page file. So at the top of it, you can see the page number. You can see the sentence number on the arrow on the left-hand side of the page. right? So page 23, 24, 25, or sentence 23, 24, 25. And at the top of the arrow is the page. And then there's the paragraph, so you can find your way back. It's just a way to teach you to make it easy for you. You can see protesters in front of Sellafield, England, where there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging into the ocean. Uh, radioactive, not over melted cores, but radioactive, radio, now that's a radioactive potato, but a normal background radiation of potato has nothing to do with radiation, period, it's indigenous to this planet. Bananas, they're indigenous to Earth, they got nothing to do with background radiation, okay? You can eat bananas till the end of time, not going to give you any cancers, they can't. Uh, the background radiation water has no part of the conversation we're into, 
Neither does the sun. The sun has nothing to do with the radiation we're talking about. So anybody that's out there talking about that and using that in the equation, dear the machine, you got to be careful. They can give you good information, so you got to watch it. But you got to watch these people because they're educated and they know better than to use that stuff as an example. It's not an example. And now, now we're seeing pla radiation on planes, right? Scary radiation on planes. When normally the background from radiation on the plane w was insignificant. But now you're actually getting radiation because the upper atmosphere, the tropospheres and the stratosphere is being filled up with radioisotopes from uh, Fukushima and everywhere else. There's a lot of, like I say, Iraq and then there's uh, Hanford. But this is still a field and there's 8 million liters a day hemorrhaging to the ocean every day now for a couple of decades. And it's going to take them 100 years to decommission. So that's just like Fukushima. And... That goes right out into the ocean. You can see all these power plants are right on the oceans and rivers and lakes. We'll get to that. And that's a nighttime shot. We're moving pretty fast here to get through this for everybody. Because I got a little surprise at the ending and I want to get to it. And so you can see that Sellafield, England. You can see the relationship that has. Uh, let me come back to that for one second. So you can see where the A is to. So... If you head, uh, if you head that way, right towards the left of the screen, you go up over the top and over the other side, but it goes all the way over across to the other countries too now, and that's been hemorrhaging out there. So that whole area should be looking like uh, Fukushima's Pacific Ocean looks like, but not as bad because we don't have the hot coriums, but still really terribly, unbelievably radiated, and that's why you're seeing these storms now in Britain and other countries down there getting so vicious because. You have these molecules moving so fast from all that energy. That's uh, Sellafield, England, once again, where there's 8 million liters of data. Just, they dumped thousands and tens of thousands, tens of thousands at sea all over England, folks. Um, Sellafield. Even the wind that blows over it is contaminated. It's so contaminated, you've got to shoot the seagulls when they land at Sellafield, England. It's so contaminated it is. And you can see as it starts to come out, you can see how it goes right around, see? It goes right around to, right, over to other countries. Because it's coming out from the center there of the screen, from, from uh, right there, right? That's where it's starting, and it's coming up and going over and down, and then over to the modern countries on top of that. And so that's all radiated water. Unbelievable, folks. Once again... You can see the projections, but they don't take into account the 8 million liters a day. That projection doesn't. And so that's what it really looks like constantly now because it's been doing it for so long around Britain, Great Britain, Scotland, Ireland, England. Terrible. Um, that's once again Sellafield, England. We're almost finished. England. You see chemtrails over Sellafield, England, to keep the radiation down. You can see uh, the radiated sheeple. I like that picture so much. And once again, bananas, water, rocks as background radiation. Got nothing to do with what we're talking about. Unless it's uh, radiated potatoes. But the sunshine sea has nothing to do with plutonium, nothing to do with strontium, nothing to do with any of the isotopes we're talking about, and so it should never be in the conversation. And that's a great picture, I thought. Uh, we're almost there. So once again, that's a reminder, isn't it, folks, of the fables, right? Because no vacuum cleaner can clean that out. Nobody can get down there. No divers are going in there. That's most toxic spot on the planet right now you couldn't you just couldn't do it see and it's doing that to our ocean once again there's three cores sitting on the bottom bottom on the bedrock and they usually had a million gallons a minute going over each of them to keep them cool to keep them under control and the only reason they're on that site is because it's on the bedrock and there's a river running over it so just the normal calculations was 4.3 billion gallons a day getting flushed out into that ocean if we think about the intensity of what will happen if that wasn't going on, it would turn that whole site into a sinkhole. Those buildings wouldn't be there if there wasn't water running over that. 
9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, uh, rocks will melt at a couple thousand degrees. So once it hits to down there, it's surrounded by water. It has to be. Um, the Grim Reaper. And the plutonium escaped Fukushima reactors is gas. Um, 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. So it atomizes all the rods that you're seeing in those uh, destroyed buildings, right? So down in the center, that is 9,000 degree Fahrenheit, right? And so like a laser burns a hole up to it, and you now all the rods that are around the edge from the many pools and from the reactors themselves, um, you know, most of them melted down into a big heap, I would imagine. But the rods that are falling down are atomizing in a gram of uh, that stuff, hundreds of thousands of tons there, but a gram of that will produce more um, nuclear atoms than every grain of sand on the beach of on the planet. So what's the hundreds of thousands of tons in each of these reactors have done? How many has that released um, is extraordinary, right? Let me come over. i got to catch up. We're almost finished. Oh yeah, that was uh, another media Washington blog called out the Canadians for not uh, for not reporting to their citizens about that plume that came in on March the 20th. I was talking about earlier. This is about the buckyballs, and they're so small that just the wind will carry them. They're like the dust in your house you see on a sunny day, and they're like a little nuclear engine, right? The uh, Oh my goodness, I can't remember. Okay, so basically what happens is it forms... Uh, I know the name too. But anyway, it forms these balls because you sprayed salt water on the melted cores you were just looking at, on the melted structures, and went down on the cores. The salt water originally produced all these buckyballs because they just there was a massive amount of water they sprayed in there the first couple of months, is what you got to take into consideration. And that stuff, the, the sulfur in the water... Uh, created these balls where the center of it accepted uranium, strontium, plutonium as little engines. So these things are like little engines. And there's a link below, one of the, I think the first, second, third link below is to a peer review academic study about that. And there's a number of peer review academic studies below. And so they're so tiny, when you look at the dispersal of these, and this was over um, 19 days. And so it's not like it just all stopped all of a sudden. The rain is knocking that out of the sky and it's continuing to come over as you can see in the study. It's continuing to come over. It's continuing to come over. Right? You can see it's just come totally blanketed 8,000 miles of ocean by 5,000 and the entire uh, North uh, America. And so that's radio fallout over all of our countries. And you can see how the ocean currents work. That's a really good model, folks. A really good concept. I'm going to boogie down through these so I can finish it for everybody because I know we're pushing. Sheeple uh, magazine. I thought that was interesting. Uh, hour and eight minutes. I'm going to have to give it up, I guess. I'm going to have to give it up. I'm not going to get to finish it. Well, I am finished it, I guess. There you go. Let me finish it. So I'm going to take a minute. We're to Ed. Hi, Mickey. Yeah. I'm just going to finish that one first. Uh, so I'm going to wing it for Ed, who was here last night and got stomped on by about 400 comments or more. And the first picture... This is fun, so it's worth the minute, hour and eight minute wait, I think, for this one. Ontario's only worry from radiation is Pickering, Darlington, and the Bruce Nuclear. Hang on. I got a picture for you. I'm supposed to. Right there. And you can see all the nuclear plants are right on Lake Ontario. And he says any one of those plants has a meltdown, 50 kilometer radius will be affected. 
which is millions and millions and millions and millions. But Lake Ontario runs all the way down to the capital, Ottawa, and then all the way down to the east coast of Canada. And so all those communities become uninhabitable. And Lake Ontario, if that turns into a death plume like Fukushima, it turns into the Pacific Ocean, which it will, if any of those reactors, their, their old shit plan is the river comes in, right, and <laughs> takes over the melted core, see? So what Ed is saying is a total fable. This is an incredible fable. And right quick, we're almost finished. He said, it would take approximately, you'll love this one, 137,000 years uh, to contaminate 1%. I've seen a report that the amount of radioactive water being poured into the ocean is 30,000 tons per day. If this were true, which it is not, well... You can find that exact same comment up on Ron Paul's site and up on God Lake's production, word for word. So he copy-pasted it, folks. Pretty slick, eh? That's a PR firm for you. And he says, Source is a good thing. Prove I'm a PR worker, Dana. You can't, just like you can't prove Fukushima will do shit all to anyone anywhere other than Japan. I enjoy a new feet point of view, though. Always fun. That was one of his last comments. He used Nufi derogatorily. Um, well, if you didn't block people with the real facts, Dana, I wouldn't be on this account. All your maps are not from university studies or official organizations, are they? Any credentials? Yeah, they all are, every one of them. The links are all below, always have been. Uh, there's one of them there, you'll recognize it. Here's another one for the Buckyballs, uh, you'll recognize that. And that's it for us. And that's it for Ed. Uh, he got destroyed last night by the, the people, uh, monitor, moderated them themselves, 11, hour and 11 minutes, pretty good. We got through it all, so I'm gonna erase everything uh, on my computer. I'm gonna be back tomorrow night for one more show. And then I'll be down for uh, several days Why I, I purge everything off my computers. I go get my Google account started up so we can invite people into the conversation. And so you will see some of these videos, test one, test two, showing up here on the site uh, after the moral night show. And so it'll, be, it'll take me two or three or four days. Uh, and so I'll have everything organized and then I can, uh, I'm going to purge all the vi pictures off my computer so these pictures will get re-up onto my computer but in a different format. And I'll try to concentrate now on finding people and inviting them into the conversations as um, more, more important than what I'm doing right now, the way I see it, that if I can do something like that, because I'm still there, I'm still in the conversation, but we can get somebody else into these conversations. And so I, I'm intending to try to master that uh, by Monday or Tuesday of next week, and then I should be back up and rolling again. So I am going to do one more uh, fun show tomorrow night, if there's such a thing in this topic. But, uh, I mean, just keep it on a lighter note, and uh, we'll catch everybody. We'll catch everybody tomorrow night. I'm going to catch all your comments a little bit later, get a cup of tea, and I'll sit down, and we'll go through it. Red Button Studios. Hi, Donna Bell. You made it. Joel, 333. Um, Daisy, Elizabeth. Sergeant York, Mickey, Sylvia, Miss Milky was here, I know, Camshaft, uh, Aviator, Bob Smith, Lori, just passing through, Zigfree, Zipfree, sorry, Joel, Sergeant York, and once again, um, Mickey, Lori, Kutzer K, there you go, Atom, Reram, Kathy, Checks and Balances, Bob Smith, that's awesome. I got a few extra names in that time. Green Row Project, thank you. Want to be 24 Live? We'll check it out. Uh, Dwayne, Lisa. Yeah, just passing through. Thank you. Christopher. Albert, once again. Jimmy Joe Smith. Sylvia. Alex. Oh, looks good, folks. I know I'm going to miss a few people. A few people. Uh, Ivan, Baby Mama, there's uh, Mama Knox too. She's done a lot, folks.
there's everybody down below just chair query and we'll catch you folks tomorrow night that's a long stream and so we got all our pictures and that's actually a really good one i think because we got all of that stuff in the one actual video from 49 day collection pretty darn cool okay folks we'll see you tomorrow night thank you